Scott Pilgrim Takes Off isn't what we thought it was going to be. Unless you were keeping up with the creator, Brian Leo Malley's Twitter account before you watched it, you probably didn't know that it heavily deviates from the source material to become almost an entirely different story. This sparked some outrage on social media. Fans of the source material and casuals who just love the movie united to tear the show down, calling it a bait and switch, complaining about various changes, and a post with 6,000 likes telling you that it's a 2 out of 10 and to skip it entirely. Which is a damn shame shame because they're missing out on one of the most vibrant and expressive anime of the year. This shit is packed to the brim with energy. Filled to the brink with charisma. <laughs> and, 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 and both some surprisingly really good action too. That doesn't mean that there's nothing to be disappointed about. The way Netflix marketed this show, even I thought it was just gonna be a one-to-one -one adaptation of the comics, but before I get into why people are so mad and some of the legitimacy of the criticism, I just wanna set the stage for something that I think kinda exemplifies a recurring theme in this video. The adaptation is fuck amazing, but why it's amazing is a lot more interesting. Science Sadu did a phenomenal job with it, taken from every source imaginable, from the comics to the movie, the old Adult Swim animation, or even fan-made stuff. It's all whisked into one beautiful blueberry pie with their own little special ingredient that'll have you floating at the center of it. And god damn was that pie baked with love. Aesthetically, this is Scott Pilgrim. It was crafted with care and an attention to detail that only someone who's a fan of the series could really put in. They capture some of that same entrancing motion and pacing from the movie in its transitions. The director of the movie is actually in the show as Edgar Wong. <laughs> 90s pop culture and video game references like the title screens, the virtual boy, or the fucking little Metal Gear alert pop-ups over characters' heads when they get surprised. Envy pulling up in the same giant ass limo or the soundtrack being made by the same band from the video game. And all of this is really just brushing the surface of all the callbacks and Easter eggs filled in. And the fights are these vibrant, colorful explosions of energy that, while they might not have the same bone crunching, blood spilling shit of your favorite shonen, where they stand out is in the style. Bouncing between action scene to scene and transitioning backgrounds in stages like you're really in a fighting game, it makes everything feel so dynamic and passionate. This show immediately stands out as one of the cutest little pieces of animation I've seen this year, and although there were a lot of fucking complaints about Scott Pilgrim Takes Off, I struggled to find even one that was about the animation, the direction, or the music. So I'm thinking you might have two questions. If the adaptation is so good, what are people so mad about and how am i doing that with my mouth mind how i'm doing it in the first episode of the anime Objection! The entire thing plays out just like the start of the movie or the comics. Scott sees Ramona in his dreams, the band goes to Julie's party, he meets her, sets up a date later, struggles to break up with Knives, and eventually ends up in the same situation with Knives and Ramona both at the band's competition show. But it's here where things start to change. When confronted by the first evil ex from the league, Matthew Patel, Scott Jesus? <laughs> This subversion in the plot completely flips the story on its head, but as nonsensical as the complaints can get, there are some seriously legitimate ones too. The comics are legitimately pretty damn good. They offer a lot of insight into the characters that you don't really get from the movie or the anime, and it's probably my overall favorite of the three in terms of pure writing. So I can understand wanting to get that source material adapted, especially since the movie is different enough that a one-on-one -on -one adaptation would add a lot to the series. I also understand just being frustrated that you're not getting what you expected. The market right now is kind of oversaturated with these bait and switches or shows that seemingly use an IP to get popularity in order to push something else entirely. Like I said, going into the show, I had no idea it was going to be this way either. I was fully ready to relive some of my nostalgia for the Scott Pilgrim series and experience that world again. In that regard, Netflix did a horrible job with the marketing. Maybe it's just an intentional risk. Of course, you don't really want to spoil the big twist in your story if you can avoid it. But everything they put out on the surface made it seem like this was really just going to be a rehashing of the same story that we were used to and maybe even love. So to get that ripped away from you in the middle of an episode, 
I can understand how that's frustrating. But Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is so much more than just a simple bait and switch. What separates it from those other shows is that attention to detail, that love for what inspired it in the first place that we talked about with the adaptation and that's so evident in every episode you watch. But that love isn't exclusive to just the animation or the music, it's evident in the writing too. This anime captures everything core to its predecessors while simultaneously showing it through an entirely different lens. Those themes that Scott Pilgrim is so well known for, this idea that you can unintentionally hurt people, the idea of escapism and finding a way to love yourself despite the mistakes you made in the past, identity, responsibility, friendship, love, all of it is still in the writing of Takes Off. The characters and humor you might have fallen in love with when you first saw it are still there. Yeah, the comic explains some of the context better and develops some of the characters more than the anime does, or maybe the movie is a little bit funnier than this is, but the anime brings just as much to the table. Characters that just don't get as developed in the other stuff, especially the League of Exes, get plenty more screen time here than they do anywhere else. And through that writing, it offers a way to experience the story again that feels fresh, that feels more like a true successor, more like a real deserving sequel than a reboot. The magic of Scott Pilgrim Takes Off is that somehow, despite this being an entirely new story and an entirely new take on the Scott Pilgrim franchise, it preserves everything that made Scott Pilgrim so good in the first place, and it does it with so much charm and with so much heart. In a world where so much of the current media produced by big companies is just recycled, uninspired sequels and reboots, whether it be Netflix putting out another half-ass cash grab of a live-action anime, no I'm not talking about One Piece, please relax, or Disney constantly being criticized for not being able to come up with anything new or inspired at all. We should be embracing this kind of change, embracing something different, embracing this kind of risk, especially when it's done this well. There's nothing wrong with preferring the movie, preferring the comic, or hell even preferring the anime adaptation, but this constant need to compare, and trust me, I get it. When I first had the idea for this video months ago, I was going to title it Scott Pilgrim the Anime is Better Than the Movie, or Scott Pilgrim the Movie is Better Than the Anime, whichever one I ended up believing. But God is it true that comparison is the thief of joy. And Scott Pilgrim takes off, stands on its own two feet so well that it just doesn't even feel right to make that kind of video anymore. This idea that the show is worthless or that you should just skip it only because it's different isn't one that I can vibe with. And I promise that if you go into this with an open mind, with expectations that it's gonna be different, that it's not gonna be the same story that you're used to, you won't be disappointed. Or I don't know, maybe you will. Then you always have the comics and the movie to fall back on anyways.